Shalom. Hope all are doing well. And Pastor Corey here with the Straightway Ministries in Straightway, Kansas City, where it is about 47 degrees. So it ain't that bad compared to last night. And some of the other places as we traveled back home last night, man, I think we, one place it was about 12 degrees. So we're doing all right. Our video today is on Deuteronomy 28 and the ex inclusion, all right, of the Gentiles. So I just want to, you know, talk about a few things that's on my heart today because I think we're missing the point all the way around in how this restoration thing works. And not only how restoration works, but how we are to be converted to the way of righteousness. You know, as I see it, and as I look around, you know, my concern ain't even about, you know, what the camps are teaching or who's accepted in the camps or who is not. More so than it is the fact that we have people who come into this way, be it black, white, brown, red, or whatever it is. Two things. If we black, we don't quite understand the will of Yah and what he has done to not only redeem Israel, but to call others to himself besides those whom he had called. And if we are black, or it seems like some of these, I mean white, and it seems like some of these other nations of Gentiles that come in, they come in and do exactly what Apostle Saul preach against and that's excluding the natural branch or getting rid of or separating himself from we're doing it so I'm going to talk about each one of those train of thoughts on both sides especially on the Gentile side but let me start with the natural seed side. The natural seed of Israel is so hurt, so torn behind the historical oppression and depression that you're trying to decide for the Most High Yah on who comes in and who doesn't. Because in the Tanakh, the Torah, it already tells you and give instructions on strangers coming in. And it already told you, even in Exodus, Exodus to not abhor a stranger. Because Yah wanted you to remember that you were strangers in the land of the Midrian or in the land of Egypt. That's in there. I don't give a damn how you try to fight me or the comments you make or what you don't want to believe. You know, in trying to talk about strangers, it's in there. Right? And the other thing with the strangers are the nations, are the isles, or the Gentiles. 
Yah said he was going to use them to provoke Israel to jealousy. Now, let me give you a standpoint. Seeing that we're going to be in a marriage again with the Most High Yah. He said that he was a husbandman unto us. And that we're going to be going to a marriage feast at the end. So considering that and considering the Torah, for those of y'all that know the law, Yah has brought in another wife in bringing in the nations to provoke you to jealousy so that you would straighten out. Even Paul said he is an apostle to the Gentiles hoping to provoke to jealousy his brethren in the flesh. So with that being said, the jealousy should cause us to want to return to the rightful place that's gonna be yours. All right, without a shadow of a doubt, it's gonna be yours. Nobody can change that, nobody can separate you from that. But then when we cross the lines on it, and we see that the spirit of the word of Yah in Deuteronomy 28 has spoken to the dry bones. It has spoken to the hearts of them who have questioned deeply in, in the inside. See, you know, and that's what I see that grafted in Gentile Israel can't hardly receive, being that they not truly grafted in because once you grafted in, you become as one as Israel. That, that was already Torah. For the stranger and for the homeborn that is within the gates and so then when we see you know that these who come and join themselves to the covenant and that's what they're joining to you're joining you're not joining a people more so than you're joining a covenant so the second covenant was to the house of israel and the house of judah and so you're being converted to that covenant that was to them and so, even as the descendants go back and look at the Deuteronomy 28, it speaks deeper than you can ever imagine. You know, in my other old video, this part four of OIM, I believe I'm gonna start that video out with the voicemail call that I received from one of the brothers that's here in the congregation when the police pulled him out of his car improperly no cause you know, even the judge had to send back to him all the things that they thought they was bringing him in on was not held up in court against him because they failed to do their job when they already have had him held in a false accusation. And when he reported it, they never did nothing about it. So then now, here it is, another black man had to suffer at the hand of these people who can do whatever the hell they want to do. And they get, what they, they get away with it. Just like this guy out here uh that was the he was a former running back for Washington State University and it was reported by the store clerk that he turned in a false $20 bill man you should have seen that video they beat the damn crap out of him the daylights I mean they was choking this dude and just it, I mean it, it's just sickening beating the crap out of him then guess what? They reported that the $20 bill was legitimate. And what's happening? 
nothing. So when bloodline Israel, who you're born with that hurt in your framework. So when the spirit of Yah speaks to you about all the curses and the oppression and, and the bruising and being the lowest and, and chains, a yoke of iron around your neck and your children gonna be taken away and you gonna, your eyes are long for them all the day long and they should never return and you're gonna be taken by way of ship. Man, that stuff resonate. It resonates deeper than you can ever imagine. You would never be able to imagine. From then to the beatdowns in the stores and the beatdowns in front, man, you, you'll never be able to imagine. So you want to, you know, stake a claim that there's no blood test and that we, you know, my people are just trying to find, man, it, it, it's, it's disheartening that you can't see, but it don't matter. It just provokes me to go and serve the most high yet harder and those that will here is going to admit it and serve alongside you and we will be brothers and sisters so when it comes to now on the gentile side then we see where people can't accept those who have been touched and they heard the voice well on the inside and it deeply stared up and it caused you to wait. They can't accept it. But on their side, they're coming in and they're taking to the Torah saying that, yeah, we're, we're Israelites because of the adoption and we, we're Israelites and, you know, we're Messianic and we're this and we're that. But how many people truly acknowledges Deuteronomy 28 and preach the curses to the rest of the nations because after all Yah has made a proclamation to the Gentiles that if you don't get it right your lot is going to be bad off because of what took place and you how you you know how the word says you further the affliction Yah said I was but a little sore displeased but you you furthered the affliction and so then my point is this you know about sitting in the debate you know I told one of the brothers I said man you know what I really feel sorry about is that you can see the arrogance in some of the people that's sitting around because it's, it's this that we're not hearing the spirit of the word. If you hear the spirit of the word, you're going to know Yah has still got a people in the earth. And he's going to redeem them. And they have the right to salvation first. You're going to know that. And you will receive it. And you will be able to look in the curses and accept that was what's what done to his people. And you will look out and un unharden your damn heart and accept it. But guess what? Nobody's preaching it to these people that were sitting in this church. And it's a horrible thing because those people are going to totally miss the mark because even their pastor said Jesus nailed the law to the cross and he called himself reading out of Galatians and I knew it I knew it I shook my head because brother he said he's gonna put the laws on the inward part all the outward <coughs> fleshly works that brought you back in the covenant with Yah through sacrifices are no more because the, the ultimate sacrifice in Yahshua has brought about freedom from those sacrifices while we await the restoration, the full restoration of the kingdom. All right? But the whole of the matter is that those people are sitting in that, they, they sat in that church and they have no clue 
they only are sold on the assumption that if they confess Jesus is Lord, then they shall be saved. And that is works. Or maybe that's faith without works. And we know that is dead. So my encouragement to you who are going to be Israel, preach the truth. Don't separate yourself from the true branch. Don't esteem yourself higher than the cut off branch. And don't give yourself a place that is a place that only you can now ascribe to because Yah doesn't have a people anymore. Don't do it. Preach the truth. Live it and desire it. Because guess what? It's like Wisma Solomon said. These folks are going to look up one day and say it was us who was in derision. And it was they who were the true sons of Yah. I leave you with that ponder to set your heart aright. And if you don't know whether you are a Gentile by distinction and by nation and by tongue and by your heritage where your forefathers were scattered to, go check Genesis 10. Go back and look at my series, Oh I Am. And go look at what the book says. He's going to restore his people who was the apple of his eye. And you try to replace them. You're going to remember these words if you've heard this video. Shalom.